Perfect. Yes, Leon. Koffel. Koffel. Yeah, Do you say it, Koffel? Koffel. It's Danish, right? It's Danish. It's pretty hard to pronounce. I've actually had people tell me I should consider having like an athlete name, you know, like something <laughs> cool. Something like VJ Jones. Like he has the perfect goddamn name. VJ Jones. He sounds like a superhero. He sounds like he's arriving on a plane with a cape. Like he's just flying there, just like a superhero. And Ian Koffel sounds like you're, you kind of got something in your throat. You're like, oh, this guy, he did well today. Like, oh, my throat hurts. It's horrible. So, but I like so, it. I love it. It's like my family name. So I love it. But it's, it's impractical around the world for sure. So you're from Denmark, right? Uh, so you could maybe look for a Viking name or something, especially now with Netflix. All these Viking stories are like very popular, especially if you are into OCR. There could be a really cool Viking name out there. Maybe I should look into that. I'm the thing is I'm I'm kind of small. I don't have I, I can do a beard, but I don't have it, so I don't look a lot like a Viking. Uh, <laughs> but it could be cool. I could stop showering and just get a big beard and be a little bit smelly. Eat so, raw meat. Yeah, get a Viking name. Well, a lot of protein, you know, and your last name could be Leon Kofoet San, no? Or something like that. Uh, something like that. Something like that. So tell me, uh, Leon, welcome. How, how, how did you spend uh, your day today? Because you mentioned before off the record that you, you, were, you are quite busy, no? I'm actually, I'm always trying to keep my, I'm not trying to keep myself busy. It's been a thing I've done since before I can even remember. I've always been having a lot of projects, working on things and all that. But l this last year and a half, I've been trying to really cool it down to focus on recovery and training and being a good athlete. But I bought an apartment and that doesn't really renovate itself. So I've, I'm busy trying to fix up the apartment. I've also had two little runs today and I did like an hour and a half on the bike. Um, and with getting enough rest and stuff, it, it's, it's a little bit busy. Also, I'm seeing a, a, like a lot of social things happening around me. Um, I'm also setting up uh, events for, for raising money for cancer awareness and stuff. So there's like things happening all the time. And I really just want to... Uh, focus on my training and focus on performing but uh, it's hard for me just to like let to not do anything else but today has been extraordinarily long with with renovating the apartment we were making the floor and painting some doors and stuff and it it sounds simple it's just like it's very time consuming and you don't do a lot of breaks but yeah so i've, I've had a really good day I've, i've easy training day just easy endurance Tomorrow I'll be back on track. Literally, I'll do a track training session in the morning and then some strength training in the afternoon and maybe also a grip training session. So it's, it's going to be a good Tuesday tomorrow. I'm excited about that. How, how was your day, mate? Well, can we, can we imagine you like uh, some kind of karate kit, like uh, cleaning and uh, repairing or improving the floor and training so um <laughs> wash on wash off is coming um that's gonna be yes. tomorrow because i'm gonna be doing a wall like um i'm not sure the let me get that english word real quick um where, where is your apartment leon in copenhagen i'm gonna do some uh, spatula work on the walls so it's gonna be like wash on wash off i bought an apartment pretty close to the airport Because I'm going to be traveling a lot, so um, got a decent um, decent price and stuff. So I'm very excited to uh, to have that place to stay. It's gonna it's my first time owning an apartment, um, so being my own landlord and stuff, it's it's gonna make life more simple and better. I think to mm. to have my own place. But nice. Now do you nice. this, uh, all this COVID crisis? Uh, how have you passed the days, the weeks? In Denmark, Dude, no problem. No problem. I've, I've been busy doing other stuff. I also teach in the university as my like kind of normal job. It's not a lot, but every once in a while. So in the beginning, I did some online stuff, and it was good. Um, I've also been doing the World OCR virtual series. We have had one race in Denmark. I've been doing a lot of training, and I've also been doing a lot of recovery because as soon as Corona came, I I realized I was having some. Uh, some really bad issues with my shins. So I, I needed like a month and a half, two months to take care of these before I could get back to, to somewhat normal training. Um, that was pretty, like the, the injury was worse for me than Corona because I, I can handle, I, I just do other things. Um, 
So, I mean, I've been doing okay. Have you been doing okay? Well, uh, I was, I, I had COVID you know, in early March, but this is another story. So it was quite interesting also because it affected my training. And uh, I really felt like very weak, uh, like a 90 year old guy uh, that never did sports. So it was, mm. it was quite an issue, but um, your, your name is Leon, Leon in Spanish, no? So it's the lion. And uh, it's actually, uh, yeah, the Greek word is Leo, which is uh, my mother chose to call me that. I, I apparently had like a lion thing. Uh, that's uh, why they, they went for it. So I have that like, yeah, I believe I have like kind of the strength of a lion. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So you just have to change the last name, but the first name I think is, is, uh, is perfect for the athlete stuff that you mentioned, no? <laughs> I'll change everything to Mufasa and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, Mufasa means father, you know. Yeah. Shit, I'm not a father yet. I should wait. I, Simba is too obvious. Yeah, I'll figure something else. Yeah, but maybe yeah. Rafiki. So tell me, friend. tell me about your training, man. So are you are you getting back to it? Are you doing enough stuff? Yes, actually, we're co we are participating in a small, uh, the only race this year in Austria. It's 20 k uh, kilometers on the on 2000 meters above 2000 meters sea level and it's an athletics or but it's just uh, at least to participate on something and uh, yes and we, we trained i'm uh, training with a friend of mine who is from south africa he has been also competing in ocr especially in south africa and now he's uh, since two years in austria and uh, yeah. uh, yes uh, we are trying to get back in shape because it has been hard and uh, you know, it's incredible if you lay, lay one month in bed, <laughs> don't do anything. It's incredible how fast everything goes away. Seriously, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. I never have uh, experienced it before, and it was really a, a little bit of depressing. No, you, you. It is. It's and it's, it's hard to hard handle. And suddenly everything is gone. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, so Leo. What you're gonna do? Is this with the uh, athletics or? Sorry? The race you're going to do, is that or, uh, organized by Xletics? No, they no, no. It's, it's, it's like the something organized like Transalpine Austria. Okay. You, uh, maybe you have heard about the Transalpine Ultra Marathon. We, we yeah. wanted to participate, but it was canceled. So it was Germany, Austria, Italy, uh, 250 kilometers in one week. And it was mm -hmm. no, but. But but tell me uh, tell me more. Your stuff is more interesting. Uh, you are teaching at university. Maybe you can answer this for all the people that will uh, watch and listen to this. But also, uh, how did you get into this sport? How were you like a very hi hyperactive boy that was uh, climbing everywhere like Mowgli or something like that? And I think. I can take it from, I mean, I grew up quite normally. I played soccer and stuff like that, did well with, with things I touched and stuff like that. I did shooting a little bit, one year of gymnastics when I was like six or something. I tried a few different things, but nothing serious until I was 17. I, I went to high school and I started doing Kung Fu as well. And I was doing a little bit of running. I was doing some strength training instead of, so I didn't play soccer anymore at that point. But honestly, I was just living a very normal life drinking a very normal or a little bit more amount of beer, having a great time and everything. And it wasn't until 2012, a friend of mine introduced mud racing and I, I, I tried to race, but I didn't do anything serious. I just ran as hard as I could, but I mean, I wasn't good at it like that or anything. But in, in 2015, I had a revelation uh, after having lived this very normal lifestyle that I wanted to do something else. I wanted to break with the norm. I wanted to be my own Leon, not what everyone expected me to do. I was getting good grades and I was part of the student stuff and I was playing music and I was social and I was doing enough exercise to look fit and stuff like that. But, you know, I wanted to kind of break the box here. So I just stopped drinking alcohol from one day to another. And then I started running in an athletic club not because I wanted to be a professional athlete, not because I wanted to, to win anything. I just wanted to 
spend more time thinking about the important things in life. And I wanted to see how well can I grow this body if I give it the good nutrition, like good sun, good rain, you know, stuff like that. So like somewhat healthy food, somewhat healthy sleep, blah, 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 blah. But what I didn't take into account is that I'm also, maybe I'm a little bit hyperactive. I have so many things I want to do. So I was, I was getting into all these different projects. I was finishing, I was doing my master thesis at this point as well. I was just like, bam, 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 doing things all the time for three, four years. And it was just getting crazy. You know, for like three and a half years, it was, things were crazy, 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 crazy. Until I won the European Championships. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, wait, let's take a break here. I'm good at this. I just realized like this is, I've been doing so many things for fun, but I've been also trying to like educate myself about my body, but the things around me, I was trying to finish my degree, like get a good job, stuff like that. And that made me just like stop, think, do a long walk. And two days later, I quit my job. I decided to be an entrepreneur and an athlete. So I just wanted to focus on this because I was like, I've been, I made such development by by giving it like a little bit of me. How about if I give almost everything of me into the sport, what's going to happen? Where am I going to end up as an athlete? But also who can I impact impact on the way? Like who can I touch and mm. help them get more motivated and develop and also maybe see that the normal lifestyle is awesome. But if you spice it up with a little bit of extra here and a little bit of extra there, and if you adjust your intensity of where you put your time, you can, you can do incredible things. Because I've done incredible things with a very normal lifestyle. And I'm still struggling trying to be an athlete, to be like that super relaxed, just living in my cabin. And all I do is run and train and eat and sleep and run and train and eat and sleep. It's like, I, I don't do that. I have too many things I want to do. But I want to have time where I'm just an athlete. So I think I started like, like everyone out there who's racing and they're racing for position 500 or position 25 or fifth or whatever. I've been doing all that shit. Like I've been there. I've been working those things. I've been showing up at races so hungover that I puked before beginning the race, just like, cause I was just out drinking and partying and not taking anything seriously. And, um, and then I'm also going to taking things very seriously. So I feel like when I'm meeting people out there, I can truthfully relate to where they are and what they do in life. Cause I've kind of been out there doing all those things, but I found that for me to take things to the next level, as an individual also grow more within who I want to be as an adult. I, I put my focus into OCR and that has helped me just be more focused in general about growth as a person. So it's, it's been a very fun journey. And now when I think about it, it's eight years since I did my first race, but then I didn't know it was a race. I didn't know it was called OCR. It was just something. You know, but it was fun. It was fucking fun. Can I swear? I don't know. It doesn't matter. But, you know, it's, it was just fun. And all that, I can just relate. I can see that in people's faces. Like uh, last weekend, I was out at the children's OCR event, and these kids were having a great time. It's like they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't care if they had good technique. They just did it, you know, just naturally. It was incredible. And the parents were struggling, having a lot of fun. And, and I think obstacle course racing really brings that into people, that incredible amount of fun. Um, and if people who try it just once have that much fun and they try it again and again, they're going to be part of the environment, the community and all these amazing people who are in it. So it's, um, I think I love what I do. I think I can say that feeling pretty confident. And I'm excited to also say that for the next um, three to five years or so, I'll be digging even deeper into exploring how to be an athlete and hopefully that's going to make me incredibly fast and a very dangerous opponent to some of these really fast guys out there i'm, I'm coming to kick ass that's definitely happening <laughs> now i want to be um um like the pokemon song i want to be the very best yeah i'm just ready it's going to be fun <laughs> the very best version of myself so so that's a long see, answer to you so yeah. you see yourself in the next three to five years competing that's that's like your short and medium term goal yeah i mean I, I think that's a reasonable amount of time um to set aside for this and during that i'll be having like in about three years time i'll ask myself are you having fun are you growing are you developing and if the answer is no i fucking hate it like <laughs> it's probably not going to be that answer but if it is i'm going to have to reevaluate what to do because 
I do have a very interesting degree in financial mathematics and statistics. So maybe I should go out and, and work with this and, and grow in a different manner. I don't know. Maybe that's my new passion afterwards. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'll find a different way of being within OCR. I want to compete for as long as I think it's fun. Maybe that's three. Maybe that's five. Maybe that's 500 years. I don't know. I, I just want to do it as long as I have a, a swell time being out there. And um, I want to do it in a healthy way. I'm all, that's also why I'm thinking many years ahead. I don't want to have a quick fix and be really good in, in six months. Mm -hmm. I don't mind waiting. I can, I can be patient and then I'm going to kick ass in the future. I'm excited about that. Like how you can transform and shape your body over time. It's People got to be more patient. How about uh, all this transformation that you mentioned as an athlete? How do you develop yourself from a normal person, as you, as you mentioned, like a hyperactive young uh, guy, to uh, also in the mindset to be a professional athlete? So that for me, it took a very long time. I wish I had people around me by that time who could have helped me more and could have talked to me more about the importance of self-evaluation, finding values and stuff like that. It's Because it's a very tough thing to do, especially if you're a kind of busy guy or girl, like, because you're always distracting yourself with new things and other things. So I only changed one thing going into 2015 is I stopped drinking. That's it. I could still go out and dance and be weird and stuff like that, but I just stopped drinking alcohol. And one step led to another. And that kind of just had a domino effect with so many other things. Like I had people I stopped hanging out with and it turned, I mean, I liked these people. We had a lot of fun, but when I thought about it, they didn't really contribute to anything important. You know, it was just fun laughing. And then an hour later, if you needed help, like no one was there, you know? So it's, it, I got to just hang out with more serious people. I got to hang out with people who had different backgrounds and histories than I did and the other people around me. So I got to experience so many different things and that led to the growth. So the transformation had to have an important step. It's the stepping stone. For me, the stepping stone was to stop drinking. For some people, it could be stop eating fucking McDonald's all the time. Or for some other people, it could be um, another like life changing thing like oh i just met this girl and i'm in love with her so i'm transforming myself and you don't know how that trend started transformation is going to end so for me i just stopped drinking i thought well i'll be more healthy i'll be a better student i'll be a better friend and three years later i'm like wait a second i can be a professional athlete that's kind of interesting all right let's see what happens so it's um it kind of i kind of stumbled into it Mm -hmm. um, I wish someone had helped me and told me I could do better, be better and have coached me to do these things, but, but no one did. And you know what? It's fine. I feel like it's okay to be a self-made human being. And uh, most people are, most people don't get that help and support. So mm -hmm. if they hear my story now and they think, man, I think Leon's lifestyle is great. What can I do to get that lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Okay. You, it's a, it's a long road. Like you really got to do a long walk in order to get there. But you know what, if you start going that direction, you might just end up somewhere different in the forest. You don't know. It's probably going to be beautiful there. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's don't think the big picture in the beginning. Do the little things. Because if you want to make it a lasting change of habits and you think something really hard, you got to, oh, I want to be healthy. So, okay, I want to lose 10 kilograms. So I have to eat healthy, sleep nine hours every night, do six workouts a week. I got to do this, this, this. There's so many things. Like it's impossible to do so many things. Change one or two things, nothing more at a time. And th then you'll get used to it. You, so I stopped drinking. I got used to that. I was just, instead of hanging out, going out to the party, I joined an athletics club. So I started being with the track running people. And every time after training, instead of going out, we stayed there, we cooked pasta and we just had fun talking every time I went for training took five hours, two hours of training, three hours of fun. And these guys just changed my mindset. So, you know, you have, you have the same amount of time. It's just you who decide how to use it. So make one or two changes. If you want to make a change, don't, don't change everything, make one or two things and focus on those things for a while, like several months, and then you can change some more stuff. Yeah. You sleep nine hours. If I can, Yes. If I have 
time. I try to make my life so I can sleep nine hours every night, but it doesn't always work out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, how was it your goal, your plans to win the European Championships, or, or was it, of course, then you saw during the competition, oh well, I'm I'm leading, <laughs> I can win this, or how was? I it? almost, dude, I almost pooped my pants when I when I took the lead in 2018. In 2019, yeah. us, was uh, my, it was my plan to win. When I went to Poland, I came, I came to win. Um, and I knew I had what it took to do it. And I will do the same in Italy. I'm there to win. And I will train better and smarter than anyone else. So if they will be there as well, they will know that they are not capable of beating me that day. I will be in super good shape. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, but in 2018, in Denmark, I remember being a little bit embarrassed because someone told me to be in the front of the race. They were like, oh, we need uh, 15 people in the first heat. Leon, you're one of them. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not fast enough to be part of this. Like, you should put uh, Thomas Buell and Jonathan Alban and Nikolai Dam and Alba Soleil and Sergei. Fuck, I, I don't want to be there. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, I, I felt like... I didn't, I didn't expect myself to have the capacity, which is fun because in 2017, I had the third best time of all, but I still didn't feel it, you know? I didn't feel it. I was like, Whoa! I didn't consider myself part of this. I was like, Phew, this is crazy. So when I'm running, I was actually for the first one kilometer before the crazy obstacles came, I was thinking, why are these guys not running faster? Like, it's <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm feeling okay. And I'm still kind of in the game. This is weird. Like, this is like interesting. And then I do these obstacles and every obstacle I do, it, I do it perfect. I just make it like boom, boom, boom. And then I overtake Jonathan Alpen and Albert on the same obstacle. And I'm number one. And I do the next obstacle. And I'm so stressed. I'm so excited. I get a big pump in my forearms. I get so like, fuck, this is tough. So the next obstacle, I actually fail that obstacle. I'm in first place and I fail an obstacle for the what, first which time. Which one was I, it? A trampoline mm -hmm. to the bar from Poland. I, I fail it. I, I, don't, I only grab with one hand and I fail. Uh, but I redo it and I'm still in number one. And I know from after that one, there was a, there was a six, 800 meter running part. And I knew Jonathan Alban was number two. So I was like, fuck, this guy, he can run so fast. He's about to kill me. So I was out there running as fast as I could. I was suffering. It's like, ooh, ooh, this is hard. This is hard. Maintain control. You felt the leg, the heart. This was crazy. And um, I get back to doing obstacles. And at that point, I can see no one's going to catch me. So I'm just going hard, 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 hard. And um, trying to be in control all the time while also pushing everything I could. And... Um, coming into the final obstacles i couldn't believe it i couldn't believe it my mind was exploding my, my body was having so much pain because the the obstacles were so hard um but in the end it happened and i couldn't believe myself like i couldn't believe what happened around me and i was so proud my mom was there my family was there and it was denmark you know like as i was wearing the denmark jersey and i was just feeling incredible it was wow i did not see it coming and it just changed my life literally it changed my life because it, it that that made me quit my job three days later i went to quit my job and say fuck it i'm going all in um so um yeah did you had already... i only won a thousand euros no? i only won a thousand euros you can you can i i only won one thousand euros for the race so it's it's crazy because it's nothing it's no money i cannot even pay rent for two months with this money but still i had the feeling of a champion you know I didn't have the life of a champion, yet I had to develop this myself, but I had the feeling of being a champion. I believed in myself for the first time within OCR. I felt strong. I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not just a guy. Like, I'm going to be the guy. I, I feel strong now. So it's, it's good. It, it gave me something unexpected, and it made me so motivated, so motivated. Yeah. And in 2019, I was there for blood. I was there to go hard and, uh, and suffer and suffer. I did. It was crazy to battle Sergei Selin from Russia. He was so, so talented and it was a miracle that he didn't beat me. I'm so excited that he didn't. And, but I mean, I'm going to be so well prepared for next year for, for Selin 
and uh, Perilikin and all the other Russians and everyone else. I want to be ready for it next year, really ready. When, when you are suffering, what goes through your head and how do you say, fuck it, like David Goggins, for example, stay hard? How do you continue? Because the suffering is horrible, no? And how, how can you still go on? What goes so through? I have a lot of, I have a lot of ways to distract myself. Um, they only work if it's important. Mm -hmm. If it's not important, it doesn't work. Then I hate the suffering. I don't want it. Then I don't want, I mean, it, it has to make sense to me. If it doesn't make sense for me to suffer, I don't like to suffer. I, I hate it. It's, it's not fun. I, I, I love doing intervals because it makes sense to me. You know, it makes sense to me. I'm going fast. I'm getting faster. I can see my splits and everything. Or when I'm doing like ninja training or pull-ups, I can see like, it's, this is tough, but it's, it's getting me to grow and get bigger. And uh, as a person, not, not like big muscles, but, you know, like to, to grow stronger. Mm -hmm. So at a race, I decide, I decide it's important. I, and this is, I keep that in mind all the time. Today is important. And then, you know, you're racing. You can tell yourself all sorts of crap. Like, yeah, oh, you're suffering, but this guy is slower than you. Or um, you're suffering, but at least your running form is still good. Like, keep up your legs. Keep them running in a good pace. Think about how to do it with your arms so they don't get cramped up. Look at the nature here. It's absolutely beautiful. You're privileged to run here. You're privileged to race here. You're privileged to be in top five right now or top three right now to do so well. And uh, oh, the next, and I'm always also next obstacle, next obstacle, next obstacle. So You're thinking, focusing already. What is coming next? I'm also always focusing on what's coming next because there's always a lot of obstacles. So the suffering. Mm can only be focused on for a little bit and then comes the obstacle. You have to do good with the obstacle and then it's back to suffering. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking about these things. And also I always have an idea of how long I have left to suffer. Uh, I've studied the maps before, so I feel like, uh, I feel like I know when to suffer how much. <laughs> That's good. But sometimes yeah. you, don't, you don't make that decision in championship races. It's not your choice. If it's racing really hard, it's race. Everybody will suffer a lot. If one kilometer is super fast, first kilometer, everybody will suffer really hard. And then whoever can suffer the most and still function will, will do well. But the suffering is, is the hardest part. I'm still working on becoming a lot better at suffering. Cause how are you working? Talks, how, how do you work this? I, I'm working with a coach now. I just started doing that a month ago, actually. So um, hopefully in a year, I will be much stronger mentally than I've been before. Because now I've started to work with really good people who can help me grow stronger um, and to develop a, a good system in my mind as for, pro for performance and also for training and for living life. How, yeah. how do you work on that? Can you give an example? Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, we've been talking once or twice a week, my, my new coach and I about how to um, enforce good patterns and habits. So if I have a negative pattern, that is every time I suffer, I tell myself it's okay to stop or why am I doing this? Or this is stupid or you are slow or whatever. Uh, we are working on how to get rid of a negative pattern and introduce a good pattern and positive thinking and positive talks. And this can only be done with repetition. You have to do it over and over again. Because I can tell you right now, oh, next time, I, tomorrow when I do intervals, I will only think positive thoughts. I will run and puke and think of butterflies. But that doesn't mean it, it will happen. But when I'm running, I need to practice this as well. How to think about these things, when to think about them, and also be very um aware of my body and my feelings when i'm out there it's, it's incredibly important so i hope to become much more better much better at this within the next year yeah is there a possible way to measure it up how you improve like uh, because of these trainings how you improve your mental strength there could be but i don't think i want to quantify it I quantify everything else. I'm, 
a mathematician, so I quantify all my other data and what to do with this. Yeah. So, um, but with the mind, I think I want for it to remain fluent and um, uh, personal. You know, everybody is personal in the mind. So, I believe that there are some good mind uh, and training mind training apps like Headspace and stuff like that. But it's not something I aspire to fit into. I want to work with this on a personal level. So I don't care if an app or any other program says I have improved. As soon as I feel I have improved, uh, and that can be obtained either with results or by feelings. So if I feel mentally stronger in training and for racing, I will feel that I have improved and that is a quality. Um, so how much have I improved? 5%, 10%, maybe 500%. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's okay for me to not know. Mm-hmm. As long as I feel stronger and better equipped, I feel like we're going the right direction. Um, cause you can get hung up in numbers. It's the same with running. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're running and all you're looking at is your numbers and you forget that sometimes you have a bad day or you're in a bad mood or. Uh, your legs are tired or your girlfriend's nagging you, naggy, 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 naggy or something mm. like it's, and then you go run your 10 times 400 and you can see your average is two seconds slower per lap than last time. You're going to be so hard on yourself. Like, Oh, you're so shit. You're so slow, blah, blah, blah. And that is not a positive way to do it. I try to feel like work on feeling as well. Like if I'm tired, I'm not going to require myself to, to run so fast and for example, 400 or 1000 meter repetitions, I will just adjust, oh, today I'm super tired. So instead of doing um, 70 seconds per 400, I will do 72 or 74. Mm -hmm. And then if that feels easy, I can always go back to what normal is. But if I'm not feeling it, I will just slow down a little bit. And this is funny, it sounds so easy when I say it, but when I'm out training, this is not easy. You don't want to slow down. You don't want to be slower than before. And you don't want to be quitting on the team effort. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it's, the ni- it's the right thing to do, but it's the hard thing to do when you're training. So and to accept uh, no, that you're tired, that you cannot. Yeah. And also I do the same. If I'm feeling really, really strong, I kick ass. Like it's, I want to go out and, and run well. So, but instead of going faster, I just do more. Mm. So if I can do normally six times 400 or whatever pace next time, if I'm feeling super fresh after six, I'm just going to do one or two more and do then you get, note, do you note everything down? You mentioned you quantify, no, like you do what no. you eat for breakfast, for lunch, how many calories, what is your heart rate, etc. No, no, I have, I have everything in my watch almost. The garment has so much data for lifestyle and for training. So, I can keep it there and also I'm good with numbers. So I normally remember what I ran last time um, and how I did. And with eating, I have a food sponsor in partnership with the meal delivery uh, business from Denmark. So my lunch and my dinner is super healthy and my breakfast is simple. Um, so if I run, if I do a lot of training, my watch will tell me I'm burning a lot of calories. And if I do this, I will eat extra food and ice, and ice cream and candy. Uh, to get more calories it's uh nice. you know, it's like, like last week i had two days of making uh, five thousand calories a day and wow to me almost impossible to to eat five thousand calories of normal food if you do this your belly is so it's like oh but if you eat like biscuits with butter and cheese it's not super healthy but it's calories and you kind of you got to add up some calories so and um, mm. so I don't make it like into the details because I want to have the freedom in my life as well. Mm. I think it's important to have that freedom and flexibility, but when something important is coming like European or world championships, the two months before the race, I get very focused and then it's okay for me to live very rigid and strict. But otherwise I think the, the healthy athlete is one who also takes and accept that the body sometimes reacts differently mm-hmm. uh, and feels differently. So I have to make decisions on every single day. And I think most people should do that, that as well. Important to have a balance. No, you mentioned 
so many questions I still have, but uh, maybe three or four small questions. Uh, what do you think about that OCR is uh, trying to become an Olympic game? Then the second one was, uh, um, you mentioned you have a coach, etc., etc. Um, um, maybe you answer the first question and I... <laughs> I, I let's talk about Olympics. I think it's yeah. interesting because right now there's been um, there's been a proposal a mem memorandum I think or something like that from World OCR to collaborate with the uh, the IPF the International Parkour Federation um, and uh, to grow together. And I think a lot of people misunderstand this. It's not OCR and parkour becoming one thing. It's because these little sports that are growing and want recognition have a lot of things in common obstacles like parkour you got to get over walls and lachey from things and in an obstacle course racing even in ninja or normal ocr or adventure or long distance or whatever you you have things you have to get over and swing from and to and carry and stuff so many things go again and again, so and safety regulations, uh, judges and officials and stuff like that. So this is a collaboration I think is really good for the growth of OCR. And I know that this as a sport and the sub sports of OCR is getting represented to the, to the right people over time. The world OCR is doing a massive job to do these things with other high level actors within obstacle course racing around the world. Am I gonna race in the 2024 Olympics in Paris in obstacle course racing. That's a really big dream, but it's not something that's in my calendar right now, you know? Mm -hmm. But if it, if it ever becomes an option, if it's anything I can do to help, or if there's anything anyone out there think they can do to help to make that happen, Fuck yes, I will clear everything in my life to do that. It will be the biggest thing. But I know from other sports and stuff, it, everything has taken a long time. And I also been working with the National Federation and with World OCR. And the thing is, you cannot hurry on standard procedures. So if you make a proposal somewhere for someone who has to meet in a group on a voluntary basis, they don't meet all the time and they don't have all the time in the world to talk about your problem or proposal. So things are going to take time. And I hope to run in Paris in 2024, but it's going to be hard and people are going to have to work and we are going to all have to be very lucky. 2028 Los Angeles. I'm going there no matter what, but maybe just to watch. I don't know. Um, <laughs> all right. I don't know. Maybe just to go see if Joshua Chapter guy, he's still running in eight years and killing everyone on the track. I don't know. Maybe it's yeah. um, so I hope to see. And I think in the future we can see obstacle course racing as a sport. If and only if the people who are interested in this passionate about it are willing to take some time and invest that in a fascinating and aspiring and inspiring community. You can get so much done on your local federations, your local institutions and more, if you're willing to help put in the work. And all these little bricks are gonna build a beautiful house at some point. Mm -hmm. But if a lot of bricks are missing, we're gonna have a really shitty house. So I hope the people who hear this and who are interested and who are like, well, World OCR is interesting. My national federation is interesting. My local sports club is interesting. Guys, you are the bread and butter to make these things happen. Mm -hmm. Other people aren't making the big decisions right now, but they cannot pull the work off without some assistance and backup. So mm -hmm. I think we all need to be engaged. There's so many people talking about Olympics and obstacle course racing and so few people working for it. That's a shame. I want to see more people unite here and also put in that effort, not just the training, not just the racing and fun and beer drinking, but also take out five days a year for meeting up and helping and sharing and committing and being fucking positive. I hate people who are not positive about this. And I don't care if you agree with things all the time, we have to remain positive. It's really important. Even if 
if it's changing in ways we don't like, we have to be positive to help things grow and we can help shape them, but not if we're negative and just yelling all the time. We gotta be positive. Maybe just a short five, five questions to finish. Positive, how do you remain positive when it's, uh, when it's getting tough and difficult? What inspires you? Uh, which interesting person in history or in modern times, independent of which area, politics, sports, uh, culture, music, whatever, would, uh, would you like to have a dinner with, to have something uh, funny? And uh, maybe you can give us also, number four, some suggestions for uh, young people or older people that wants to, want to improve. And uh, the last question about the sponsorship, because you mentioned you receive only 1,000 euro. How did you manage to, to live now from this and you live also for it? And uh, for example, you mentioned also the food supplier. So you receive all your lunch, every dinner, you receive your warm, fresh food, etc. So yeah, let's, let's start with the beginning. When I say you have to remain positive, it means that if things are in federations and, 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 and so on, and little things are happening that you don't like, you shouldn't just be a turd who's yelling and complaining if you are not actively engaged in change. You have to remain positive in your attitude towards change, that it is dynamic and it is ever-changing. The eternal concept of change is that nothing is solid. So if you don't like what is happening, you can help change it and bend it in manners that you think is more proper, if and only if you have a positive mindset. If you have a negative mindset, you are going to ruin and destroy the good work of other people and yourself. And um, by positive, I mean, don't be a dick, basically. That's basically what I mean. Yeah. Um, and for, for, for motivation here, uh, I just love to see people grow. And I love to see these things happen. And I, I love to be with people who are positive. And I love to be around, um, around change. I love change, which is funny because people think they always kind of expect to know where I am and what I'm going to do. And I kind of have this thought as well, but everything changes. And, and it's, it's kind of the same concept here in life, as I say, with how you work with projects and stuff because you don't know what's gonna, gonna happen. Uh, I aspire to have a high impact within OCR uh, as, as an athlete, both with how the sport will develop and how people will train. And I know already they look at how I do obstacles and they're like, oh, I wanna do it the same way. And they're welcome to try to do so in uh, one day maybe I can help a lot of people get the capacity to do these things as well. Um, The impact I want to have is also to share my positive and no, sorry, my personal experiences with the uh, trauma, loss and uh, cancer and um, how to be in all these things that are horrible and to find a uh, outlet for explaining how you feel and to sharing uh, these feelings and emotions together. I want to also have an impact on those people who don't necessarily feel like they belong and to give them hope that they do, especially if they don't feel that they belong because deep down they're just sad because they have experienced bad things or losses because life is not over because life is shit. Mm. That's only an interim, a short period of your life that will be shit. And it is up to you to grab the steering wheel and to get that car out of the road into the lights again and make your life not shit and you are your own change manager to get there and i hope to show people that my life has been a lot of shit but i i'm here now i'm smiling and i'm talking to you and i'm having all these amazing people listen to this and i will continue to do these things to show you that giving up can be something you can do for an hour or a day or a week but you're not supposed to do that for life. Life is for growth and happiness. And you, can, you are your own master to do these things. And no one is going to do it for you. 
and you have to make sure that you have the right people around you, even if it feels tough, especially if it feels tough. And I don't know who in the world motivates me for these things. I cannot point out a celebrity or historian who, who does that. Um, but yeah, so I have, no, I have no good answer for this. I have no good answer, answer for this. And I think if, if I wanted, if there was one guy I really wanted to have a dinner with, there's a lot of people I want to go for, to, to, to have dinner with. Um, something about Jim Carrey, you know? <laughs> I want to sit down and have dinner with Jim Carrey. Yeah? Cool. Like people don't, I think they underestimate that Jim Carrey is a very interesting human being. Not just a weirdo and a comedian. He's an interesting human being. And I, I, I think he, he could be cool to talk to. Uh, about what, I don't know. Probably just crack jokes, tell stories. I don't know. Maybe. And, um, and yeah, I, I have learned to support myself as an entrepreneur. Uh, I've made businesses and good business decisions. I've also made bad business decisions. Don't worry about that. I teach in the university to maintain an, a normal income, uh, a minimum income to sustain myself. And then I do um, investments to, to see if I can grow uh, my, my money into more. Um, but yeah, price money is not big over here. In all of Europe, price money is not that big. And I need to figure out how to, to get into places where when you win, you are awarded a life as a champion or as a professional athlete because a thousand euros and you have to pay taxes and stuff it's not a lot of money and um and that's okay it's okay we have to start somewhere right mm. um but um i'm interested to see when it's going to go to a level where after winning a race i feel like all right the, the next six months i can just train i haven't had that feeling at any point in time so I make my, my own fortune here and um, I work all the time. That's the thing. People think, oh, it's just racing and training fees and crap. No, no, that's the tiny part of it. Like You don't get to do all that if you don't work well, if you don't have great partners. I put in a lot of work for my partners. I create a lot of value for brands like Innovate and for Garmin. And for the Danish organizer, Reborn OCR, they make great OCR events. And I hope to be a good representative and a good partner here. Mm. Um, and then it's up to me to transform that into uh, more. Um, and I'm, I haven't always been good at it, but I, I'm still practicing and it'll get better. Um, but yeah, it's, no one's going to give you the money unless your parents are filthy rich. But I mean, mine were never. And I learned to fend for myself. And... There's no, there's no, like, seriously, there's no secret pill, no magic pill here. It's hard work. And sometimes you got to work some, some shitty hours and do some shitty things. But if you know you're doing it to obtain something you really are passionate about, that's great. That's amazing. And um, the, the secret yeah. to being rich is um, two things. For me, to feeling rich, I'm not rich at all, like financially. But I feel wealthy and I can tell you why for two things. I give back. I always give back. Five, about 5% 5 of all my income goes back to other people. It's great for charity or for investing in other people or for investing in projects for other people. I always give at least 5% back. And it doesn't matter if I only make a little bit. I make sure that that goes for other people and for projects that I believe in and I believe so, uh, deserve support. I took this from a book called The Richest Man in Babylon. Um, you want to feel rich? You got to do some rich shit, basically. And that is giving. And you can give even if you don't have a lot. It can be giving part of yourself, part of your heart, part of your feelings, part of your persona. Or it can be giving money or giving things you have, like extra, extra sports shoes or whatever. You give a little bit back to people. And then you get, you'll, you'll get it back. But even if you don't, it doesn't matter. You gave and that's part of growing. Second, lifestyle inflation. It's, those are my two, like, I don't know if that's even one or two words, but it's my most hated words in the entire world. 
I hate lifestyle inflation. If I make more money, I'm not going to start spending more money. I think it's so stupid um, for me, at least. For some people, it's great. It's their big dream to spend more money. Oh, I have more money. I'm going to buy more cars and more shit that I don't ever use uh, to have in my house. Got to buy more expensive stuff I don't use. Like, I don't like that. I want to remain in my financial, like, functional direction. And if I make more money, it may, gives me an opportunity to grow over time. Um, but it also gives me an opportunity to give more back to other people. So I will be reasonable and financially smart about my private uh, money forever uh, with the purpose of being... Uh, um, at some point, hopefully having the capacity to retire if I want to. And that only happens if also you're thinking about how you spend your money. I think I answered all five, five questions, Alejandro. Perfectly. Something else you want to add? We, uh, we, we talked a little bit more than, than expected, but it was, uh, I think it was <laughs> nice fluent. Yeah, I think we did well. I think we did well. Um, no, I think, I think we're good to go. People can always reach out, reach out to me on Instagram and, um, keep staying tuned there. And, um, and yeah, questions, they can, can drop those. Otherwise I appreciate all the comments, all the tagging, everything. I appreciate that you guys are telling your friends where to find me and to do these things. Cause it, it, it makes it easier for me to, to get out there and to reach more people. And in that way, influence more people to have a different lifestyle and to think differently about how to do things. I think it's very important. And yeah, um, no, I just think you should aspire to, to, to live your dream. If, seriously, if your dream is, is working in IT and you're an electrician, you should re-educate yourself and become an IT guy. If you work in IT and your dream is to be an electrician, we need to live our dream, not, not somebody else's dream. And uh, my dream will probably change over the years, but right now it is to be a really good athlete and to be really good at impacting a lot of people to feel that even if you're deep down in a big hole of darkness, somewhere there's light and somewhere there's people who love you and someone who understands that you are having a hard time because I think that's important. Yeah. How, how did I think you... that's it for me, buddy. Yeah. Perfect. Interesting what you said about the dreams, uh, because uh, with you it was a little bit accidentally how you found out what you love at the moment. So, yeah, would be interesting to 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 hear how you what you think about how to find out what you really love, because it was like accidental mm -hmm. for you, as you mentioned your friend. Yeah, but I never I never had the. The thing is, when I chose education for a, a university, I didn't know what to choose. I had no clue. All I knew is what I like. I kind of like math. I, I did some math competitions. I like that. But I don't want to be like a mathematician, like really. So I, I took it with uh, managerial economics and mathematics. So I kind of feel like I got something I knew was useful and gave me opportunity and then kind of also was fun. So I, I've always been going for things that I found fun and interesting with always keeping in mind that I will only do it if it also gives me opportunity. So I aim for fun and opportunities and OCR is a lot of fun and it actually has shown to give me a lot of opportunity as well. I, I think maybe for some people it's a stupid question, but what is your definition of fun? Not that I want to be like very rational or too abstract, but uh, because uh, for some people it's difficult to connect with themselves, you no, know, because of the Dude, condition. You're so right, and and this was my problem as well. I didn't connect with myself in knowing what to do, so I took a more short-term direction. Fun is when the people you are around and your uh, realistic uh, short and long-term goals are something that makes you smile. Uh, so when I'm, when I do a tough workout or a tough race, uh, or anything, it makes me go bonkers with happiness afterwards. When I've been out teaching for four hours straight, helping people get better and talking to them about life, I feel happy and I feel like it's amazing. 
Um, do I think every workout is fun and eating healthy half most of the time is always fun and living off almost no money is always fun? No, it's not always fun, but I primarily do things I think are fun. And, to, and in order to allow myself to do fun, I have sometimes to do something that's not fun, but I can make that funny if I want to, or I can just suck it up. Both things will work. Um, yeah. Very inspiring. Leon, thank you very much. I think you didn't only touch me, but I hope a lot of people. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate you, you saying that, mate. Cool. And yeah, man. See your night in Denmark. Thank you, Alejandro. I hope to uh, hear from you again, and then um, yeah, you have a good night too. All right, mate. Surely. Thanks, man. Cheers. Bye. Bye.